Okay, so Trey, why don't you tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into the restaurant technology industry? Yeah, of course. So I got into the restaurant technology industry um, pretty much based off of some of my experience working in the industry when I was younger, um, identifying, you know, even back then when I was working there that they were always and still are a little bit notoriously behind as far as technology goes right. in restaurants specifically. Um, there's a lot of issues that come up and restaurants can't really get over the hurdle sometimes of, you know, trying to make the most, especially mostly small business owners at the end of the day. Right. Um, all they're trying to do is just make as much money as they can. And, uh, you know, labor, labor wages are always going through the roof nowadays. So, um, to that point, you know, what technology can do for them, um, is, is super efficient, you know, especially with our solutions, being able to, uh, increase the revenue and save them on labor as well. Um, so really, you know, after finishing school, wanted to get into the industry and, uh, you know, try and help out some of those, you know, restaurant owners that I could, you know, have a little bit of understanding for and try and, you know, help them combat a lot of their challenges faced today. Absolutely. Um, so how do you think the restaurant industry has evolved over the last few years and what do you think some of the driving factors behind those changes are? Yeah, I think that um, the restaurant industry has, you know, taken a lot of advancements as far as technology goes in the past couple of years. Um, specifically, I would say a lot, again, is that going to be due to, you know, wages increasing, you know, trying to meet customers exactly where they want to order is going to be a big thing in the space today, right. um, especially, you know, post COVID era, you know, everyone during COVID, there's not even allowed to order in a restaurant. So restaurant owners are trying to, you know, find out ways to meet their customers wherever they want to order. Um, so as far as, you know, advancements in the industry in the past couple of years, we see a lot more, you know, online ordering, delivery orders. And then, you know, to that point, as far as anyone going into the store to order at a restaurant as well, um, due to those labor increases in wage, um, we see the kiosk coming in as a, uh, as a big saver um, as far as, you know, not having to pay cashiers that 20 bucks, 15 bucks an hour anymore. Um, and just, you know, having a kiosk do the job better and sell more. So a lot of the changes probably have been kind of driven by the consumer preferences and their behaviors as much as anything else. Correct. Yeah. The consumer behaviors, again, you know, post COVID everything, you have to meet the consumer where they want to order from mm -hmm. everything. At the end of the day, you want to make your customer experience as good as possible. Um, and again, at the end of the day, the customer is going to be the most important person throughout that whole process. Whenever they walk into your, re your restaurant, you want them to have the best experience, provide them um, full service and, you know, meet them wherever they need to be helped. Um, the kiosk is just, you know, a great benefiting factor to that. Um, and it allows people to come in, order faster, order what they want. They don't have to get judged for, you know, adding on a milkshake to their order, making something a combo. They could do everything that they want on the kiosk, not have to talk to anyone, you know, because that's what we see a lot of people prefer these days is to, you know, just order at their speed, order how they want to, and uh, they can control everything themselves. I personally would, uh, I think, judge someone that does not add a milkshake on yeah. their order. The yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just me personally. <laughs> uh, what do you think some of the most significant challenges are facing the restaurant industry today? I think some of the challenges, as far as the biggest challenges, is really, again, meeting customers where they need to be met. And it's making the leap really just to invest in some technology to, you know, help your restaurant out. I think a lot of restaurant owners are a little bit scared or frightened to implement new technology into whatever existing technology they already have in their, you know, current operations. Um, so showing them and educating them on the results that they can see and all the benefits that come with, you know, adding more advanced technology to their restaurant is uh, going to be the biggest thing that you know we need to do is just educate them on everything as far as benefits they can see um, in their restaurant and then you so you brought up um, some of the technology uh, it's going to play into this a little bit how are the restaurants addressing that emphasis on contactless dining and payment options as well how are they what how are they like addressing i think the kind of the kiosk is one way that they're doing it yeah but kind of addressing the emphasis on contactless payment options and things like that Gotcha. Yeah. So um, as far as restaurant owners, you know, identifying a lot of these problems and meeting customers where they are, what mm -hmm. they're able to do is, you know, implement self-ordering solutions or, you know, QR codes, for example, online ordering. Um, all of these facets allow restaurant owners to meet customers where they want to order from. Um, there's a lot of third party apps, for example, that can be tied into the POS. They don't have to connect to the kiosk per se. 
Um, but it's kind of like an added on service, you know, essentially um, at the end of the day, the POS in the restaurant is going to be like the hub of their technology. We have integrated kiosk solutions that can be mapped to that as well as third party delivery apps and, you know, online ordering as well. So having that hub for restaurant owners is, you know, super important as far as collecting all data, all information and realizing, you know, the money they're making or the money that they could be making or should be making by, you know, cutting maybe menu items that aren't doing as good as other ones, for right. example. So just getting a better read into their own business as well as what technology allows them to do and it allows them to better their own business. Absolutely. Uh, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, how did COVID-19 um, really affect the industry and, and play into the growth um, of, uh, of a company like Rubber and a lot of these new solutions, th those issues? Yeah, yeah, great question. So, uh, yeah, definitely COVID was a huge accelerator, honestly, like you said, you know, it attributed to a lot of growth as far as technological advancements in, you know, enterprise brands, mid-market or any kind of, you know, fast casual, full service dining, quick service restaurant, they all kind of were shut down for, you know, a moment of time. So um, if you were a full service restaurant that didn't have any delivery service or any online ordering presence or any, you know, any technological presence at all besides, you know, ordering in, then you had to figure it out. And um, the only way to figure it out was adapting and implementing new technology into your operations. Mm -hmm. um, and again, going to elaborate on it more is just meeting customers and allowing them to order your food wherever they are, you know, at any point in time. Um, that's going to be kind of the biggest thing that COVID allowed and pushed these restaurants to do uh, to be uh, more technologically advanced. Uh, can you describe some of the key features and functionalities of Grubber's self-ordering system and the digital kiosk software? Yeah, of course. So Grubber's, the three biggest things that you're going to see with our kiosk software specifically um, is kind of three major points. You're going to see the ability to, number one, increase um, your restaurant's revenue. We see on average there's a, a bump in ticket size from you know 18 to 22 percent that we see from our data mm -hmm. um, to that point as well we see that you have the ability to reduce your you know expenses um, again wages are only increasing in the industry in Absolutely, today's world yeah. so um, our kiosk in comparison um, to you know paying a cashier hourly is going to save you thousands of dollars a month um, so that's going to be the second biggest factor that you could see uh, an impact that you could see from our solution and thirdly, you're going to see that customers are just more happy at the end of the day. Um, again, you're going to allow them to order where they want to order. Um, and they get to, again, order on their own terms. They get to add whatever items they want. We like to say here that customers buy with their eyes. Um, our kiosk software has pictures and images for every single menu item, add-on, or any like modifier that you want to have. Um, and additionally, to that point, too, we have you know upsell technology that will sure. flash a nice picture on the screen, you know, upsell that combo or add on that milkshake um, to put more money in the restaurant owner's pockets at the end of the day. Um, so those are going to be the three kind of biggest factors that we see with our kiosk awesome. software. So the kiosks are, are very user friendly. Super user friendly at the end. You know, we kind of hold your hand throughout the entire ordering process. You know, we have a nice video that's playing when no one's using the kiosk. It could be of people making the food. Um, or people eating the food, anything, right. you know, just to draw the customers in. Again, mm -hmm. customers buy with their eyes. We want our software to be super customizable and on your brand. So it entices customers to come up to an order from it. Um, it says tap to order at the bottom of the kiosk. So you're going to know to order from there. And we have dine-in and takeout options. Again, you can customize um, your kiosk and your menu to satisfy, you know, how you want your customer journey to go as far as ordering food. Awesome. Um, as user friendly as any system is, a lot of these, um, a lot of the restaurants you work with, I'm sure a lot of people that run them, you know, maybe a little bit more old school. They're not as tech savvy as you would be, or some of the some of the, you know, the the new customers are. So, what type of support and training does Grubber provide to the clients during and after the implementation of the solutions? Yeah, so I mean, we have before implementation, you know, just telling them exact kind of basic setup requirements and what they need, trying to understand how the kiosk can best fit into their restaurants going to be, you know, a huge factor in the kiosk success. 
at the end of the day, if the kiosk is placed, you know, in a wrong spot or somewhere where, you know, it's not right in front of where the customers need to order, you're not going to see those results that the kiosk is supposed to drive. So right. what we can do to help that out is, again, just try and understand where the kiosk would fit best for your restaurant. You don't want it hidden off in a corner, you know, by the bathrooms or, you know, not anywhere where the front counter is at all. Right. You're going to want it to put it where customers walk in and it's essentially going to be one of the first things they see. They're going to just gravitate towards it too. Um, you know, what I've seen is that I have that same mindset, you know, if people, again, are a little bit scared maybe of the technology and, and implementing it into their restaurant, but we've actually seen um, for our BurgerFi case study, for example, that more than half of all of BurgerFi's in-store orders were ingested by the kiosk. So wow. the adoption rates are, you know, extremely high. Again, we really hand uh, hold your hand throughout the entire ordering process, and the kiosk is uh, super easy, easy to use for for anyone, if, even if they don't know, you know, any kind of technology or they think that they're not advanced at all. Gotcha. And then what kind of information can you give me about the scalability of the Grubber solutions for clients with different business sizes? Obviously, you've got small businesses. You bring up BurgerFi, which is obviously a considerably bigger business. What's the scalability like within the, the solutions? Yeah, I would say the scalability as far as our kiosk solution is, is pretty unlimited, you know. Um, I mean, for one location, there's obviously going to be some limits. You know, you don't need six kiosks up in your store. Sure. Um, but, you know, depending on, you know, your volume and how many how much foot traffic you see in your operations, we see, you know, anywhere from like one to three kiosks is always a good range to start off at. And, you know, for those enterprise brands specifically, you know, what they see is a lot of the times it's a, We'll test it out in a corporate kind of environment. Um, they'll kind of go through their data and test it out in one of their franchise locations, for example, just to start off and see the results. And then from there, what we can do is um, sell it to the rest of the franchisees and franchisors. So scalability, again, is going to be you know pretty unlimited as far as you know who we can outreach to. Again, um, our focus is you know fast, casual, quick service restaurants. So sure. um, there's almost an unlimited amount of those, you know, in, in, in America today. So uh, we could do a great job of growing our network more and more. Um, but uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. I enjoyed the conversation and hopefully we'll talk again soon. Hopefully. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Trey.